Welcome to Unity of Charlotte. I'm Nancy Ennis, and I'm so glad you all are here this morning and so thankful for our new choir. Isn't that Yay. beautiful? Yay. And for the beautiful music they're already making. So I also welcome you into this time of contemplation. It's a time to be quiet and still settle in. And we'll start our time together this morning with our identity statement, taking a moment to remember in our heart what we came here to do and what spirit is leading us. So let's take our identity statement together. Unity of Charlotte is a heart-centered community that celebrates and teaches that every person is a sacred being. We are an open-minded, progressive community that honors and learns from the teachings of Jesus and other enlightened masters. We co-create a spiritual center that practices and demonstrates the healing power of love. And so it is. So this morning, with that joy filling our hearts in this room, let us join together in the prayer of the heart. Just take a moment put all of our attention on our heart space and breathe in and out through your heart. Inviting your heart to open and that love that is God within to flow through. So breathe in love and breathe out love for a moment. Let it fill your whole being. So full that it radiates out from you. Joining together heart to heart in the one heart. Letting it fill this room we are in. Settling into that love that is God. For a time of prayer. We do this with a faith that love knows the way. Where to go and what to do. Our part is to send it, send it out from us into the world so it is free to do what it came to do. So let's first send it to this prayer box that's right in front this morning. Fill it with heart energy for all the prayers that will be placed in it after the service and all the names that box has held throughout the years. Send it to those people. And then let's send it out of our building and around the city of Charlotte. Send it wherever you would like it to go and whoever you would like to join it, spirit and the presence of love in this moment. <clears throat> we see it flowing through the hospitals in our area, touching those who are sick, those who are taking care of them. And we feel it going out from our world going to all the trouble spots. All the places where love is needed, let it flow there. For this is what will change our world. We are helping in this moment, the love of power to change to the power of love. So see it going around our globe people joining together heart to heart, taking care of each other, respecting each other, helping each other. And as we bring it back now to the United States, see it flowing in and through our political system in these times that there is so much change. Send that love to the politicians for this is what will bring the right person, this is what will bring the right conditions that our world is crying for now. So we let your love lead, God. We feel your presence within us, your presence joining us together. We say thank you for all of our blessings and thank you for this time together this morning for unity of Charlotte that brought us all together. 
and so it is. Amen. Just a little more light. So this is our time of reflection. Let us begin our time of reflection this morning with reflecting on the kingdom. Jesus told us so many things about the kingdom. He called this kingdom the kingdom of God. He called it the kingdom of heaven. He told us about the kingdom in so many ways and he said it's a place of expansion and growth. And he told us to seek the kingdom first. And he told us the kingdom was at hand, meaning we don't have to go looking for it somewhere out there, but it's here right now. And he told us where to find it. He said the kingdom of God is within us. And that's where we find it. So his message to us this morning about the kingdom is to seek it first and find it and live from it. And that's what we're going to reflect on today. Charles Fillmore brought us away to live in and from this kingdom. If you don't know Charles Fillmore, he was the co-founder of Unity. And he came up with a set of teachings that would help us connect to the kingdom, learn where it is, how to develop it, and how to live from it. He called these teachings the 12 powers of man, which we now call the 12 powers of mankind. He wrote this a long time ago. But it's about our 12 attributes of God that make up the kingdom within. We call them qualities of God. He called them spiritual powers of God that are within us. And he told us to seek those first. And that's what we're doing this year, 2016, right here at Unity of Charlotte. We are focusing on that kingdom within. And we are focusing on ways we can develop it, bring it forth, and live from it. So every first Sunday, David and I present a new power. And they are actually in sequence. And today, our power is wisdom. Now, each of the powers has a color, a disciple, and a location in our physical body from Charles Fillmore. So I bet you can guess the color of the power of wisdom. <laughs> Anybody want to try to guess? <laughs> oh, I bet it's yellow. <laughs> kind of like the sun. And um, what happened is I discovered I don't have anything to my name that's yellow to wear. <laughs> Someone told me when I wear yellow, I look yellow. Your hair. Yeah, well, my hair, maybe, yes. And then someone came forward and made me this little name tag with the sun on it. So this is my <laughs> contribution to the color yellow. Probably all month I'll be wearing this little name tag. The disciple for wisdom is James. James was the brother of John. And it seems in Jesus' early ministry that there were a lot of James people named James. It must have been a popular name at that time because there's James the just, James the less, James the greatest, all kinds throughout the Bible. But the James that was the disciple was identified by his father and he was called James the son of Zebedee. So that is our disciple. Now the place for the location is in the solar plexus region right here. We might call it the pit of our stomach but we sometimes know solar plexus region. And this is an area where there is a lot going on chemically and with nerve and ganglions. This is a center where all of our food is digested and chemicals added and it's sent out through the body wherever the body needs it. So it's a very intellectual place in us that knows exactly what to do. Now there's really something very interesting when we look at this um, attribute or this uh, spiritual power. In the beginning, when Charles Fillmore put these together, he called this wisdom center the center of right judgment. And you can probably imagine what happened. The judgment got mixed up with judging. And it was used to judge, this is right, this is wrong, because God said it so. So it quickly got changed, too. Somewhere along the way, it became to the center of discernment meaning where this is where we can make our choices and we can see what is right and what is wrong. That got changed again to the center of wisdom. So this one has had a little name change as it kind of grew on its own after Charles Fillmore located it. So this is the place within us that God guides us. 
This is a place where we hear the voice of God, where we know God is speaking to us, where we feel the voice of God. This is the divinity we call divine guidance, guidance from the divine, and the divinity that, as people, keeps us in the harmony with the spiritual flow of life. It's a place we can make our choices and our decisions from. All this wisdom we will ever need is right there, right now. So I'm going to invite you kind of to turn up your awe and wonder here for a moment. There's so much in this, and there's so much that we can explore in this center of wisdom, but just see, hearing this with the sense of, wow, awe and wonder. Right here, right now, in every person in this room, every person in our world, is all the wisdom we will ever need to guide us on our spiritual path. Wow, I hear you saying. <laughs> it's all right here within us, kind of waiting for us right there. It's kind of like a GPS, but it's God's power of showing us. <laughs> Whatever GPS stands for. <laughs> I knew, but it flew out of my head. A positional system. This is God's guiding positional system within us. So we have our own GPS that will guide us through our ways, right inside of us, and it's true for all people. Yet so often we don't use it. We go through life figuring things out on our own, and we never take time to tune in to see where the Spirit and the wisdom of God is directing us. So it's in us, but we might also ignore it when we hear it. Because the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to have to say, I wonder where God is calling me. I might not want to go. Or I might not want to give up what I have to give up. So we don't listen to it and we don't bring it forth and we don't realize what a blessing it is to us to have this. What Charles Fillmore said about this guidance system within us, he said that the more we follow this guidance system, the freer we become in our life and the more life becomes an adventure something we all want. But to do this, we have to give up the life we planned the way we wanted and follow where the Spirit is leading us to go. So that's kind of a, a big thing that we fall up against when we come to this Wisdom Center. So I have a few ideas of how we can begin to open this center, to discover it, to develop it, and to live from it. That's what it's there for, to guide us. And I think the first thing to do would be to take time to ask ourselves, am I willing to follow the direction of spirit? If I knew it, would I do it? Just some reflection questions we can ask ourselves as we go along and get some clear answers. But if we think back, when we were born, God said, this is my will for you. When we go on the spiritual path, what we want to say back to God, this is your will. I'm giving back your will to you so that we're connected will to will with God. So if we look at it that way, the first thing would be to be willing for this guidance because it's there, it's waiting for us, but we have to be willing. The second one would be to ask questions. Ask what we need to know of this guidance system and kind of get re willing and ready to hear what it might tell us. So James in the Bible, who is our disciple, said, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask, and he will get the wisdom freely and generously. What he's saying, use your wisdom. Ask it questions, and that wisdom will come to you. Well, you probably know that Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, as they went along developing unity as we know it today, were so willing to follow spirit. And they were always looking for ways they could go deeper with the truth they knew. I think David and I are doing that too. <laughs> we show up like Charles and Myrtle Fillmore sometime, but that's a different story. <laughs> but we're realizing that unity was found in the late 1800s and today we are living in a completely different time. Those teachings are such a foundation. But we're kind of exploring ways we can bring them more and more into what we're doing here at Unity of Charlotte and in our world and use them in a modern day way. So one of the things that came to me working with this wisdom is that's probably not the best location for our wisdom. It came to me that the center for our wisdom is in our heart. Then along came the heart math classes and the heart math direction that's teaching us to use our intellectual heart in our life. 
And what it, they're telling us is the wisdom is in our heart. And those of us who have been in the heart discovery classes, the heart math classes that we have here, know that's true. And have but discovered when we ask, that comes right back to us, right? And I'm seeing head nod. <laughs> so the wisdom then is in our heart. And that would be not only a change in name, but a change of location. So what I wanted to do is kind of make this kind of like an introduction, so we kind of get the idea about this center and where it can lead us. And then next week what I'm going to do is kind of bring in a part two. And part two is going to t actually teach us how to go to the wisdom of our heart, how to stay there, how to ask questions, receive answers, and live our life from that. Won't get all of it, but we'll get a little piece of it next week so that we can really begin to take this wisdom center that's in us and use it for our guidance in our life. So that will be what we will do next week. And I hope you'll all be back. And as always, we have a, a wonderful time here. And the wisdom of God is always here with us, guiding us and directing us. And all we have to do together is ask for it. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to invite you now to get quiet and still. And go into a time of meditation by singing our meditation song. And this morning, Peggy Ruth will lead us in our meditation. It's in every one of us to be you to take a deep cleansing breath. Settle into your chair. Feel it support you. Feel the connection of your feet on the floor. Firmly connected to Mother Earth. For we are here and now in this sacred space. It's March, a new month. Some call it fickle, as it teases us into spring and then turns around and brings us right back to winter the next day. But this is good, because this helps us waken up from our winter time and look forward to new opportunities. The days are starting to get longer. There's more sunshine. We feel the earth warming and the anticipation of spring. Take another deep cleansing breath. And with that, I invite you to join me on a morning walk. 
we step out into the clear blue Carolina sky without a cloud. And as we walk down a perhaps country road, before us we see a meadow. Meadows are so beautiful in spring. And this morning, our meadow is filled with daffodils, a sea of yellow, shining their little faces up at the sun, the yellow of the sun greeting the yellow of the petals. Now let's walk into that meadow. There's a park bench there, and perhaps you choose to sit on the bench. Or perhaps for you, you want to sit right in the center of all those daffodils, feeling the fragrance and the cool breeze. And now I invite you to choose one daffodil. Look at the entire plant. The heart of the plant is hidden. Deep in the soil is the bulb, the face of the daffodil. We can't see it, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Just like your face, sometimes you don't see it. You may feel like you don't even feel it, but your faith is always there. It's an attribute from God that is part of you and part of the daffodil. But now spring is coming and the warm earth has spoken to that daffodil bulb and a green shoot has emerged from the soil and the spring green reminds us of our strength, the same strength of the daffodil. The stem has the strength to hold the flower, but the flexibility to deal with spring rains and gentle breezes. So as it moves in God's world, it uses that strength to support the flower that opens its face and shines its brilliance to the world. The wisdom that is inherent in the daffodil. As you gaze upon your daffodil, perhaps it's a pale yellow. Some of you may be seeing a double daffodil with ruffled petals. And others may see a daffodil with a little orange ring in the center. Each blossom is unique, just like us. So for a moment, let's focus on the daffodil in the silence. And I invite you, in the silence, to become the daffodil in the silence. And now, as we gently return to this place and this time, bring your daffodil with you. That reminder of your individual nature as a child of God, a special gift that you have to give to the world through faith with strength and demonstrating wisdom. And so it is. Amen and Amen.
Come on, give him a nice hand. That's just one rehearsal. Amazing. And Mr. James here. Wow, what he can do. For you that don't think you have some music in you, give him a chance. He'll find it if it's in you somewhere. Wisdom is filled in. Understanding abides Mercy, knowledge live inside And all things are new Her perfection shines through For wisdom is building this house Wisdom is building Of wisdom. Webster says that it is knowledge and the capacity to make due use of it. We all are living in an age of information. Probably most of you have several books you're trying to read. <laughs> and you can't get through one until a friend tells you about another one. And you go, oh my God, I've got I to get that one. It's an amazing time to have at our fingertips so much knowledge. But the Bible says that knowledge, too much of it, can make one weary. It really can. Knowledge is a more masculine, left brain part of us gathering information. But wisdom is in the feminine. The song I just sung actually comes from the scripture that tells us that wisdom shall build her house. The word wisdom here translated from the Greek is Sophia. So I call her Sophia. Sophia is a feminine goddess energy that knows how to take from knowledge, the seed of knowledge, and build our house of consciousness. Today, this particular attribute and power is one of the most important in our lives. For it is the breakdown of knowledge into action of wisdom. As Nancy was sharing with you, Charles Fillmore's take on this part of the body of the solar plex, 
And I thought she mentioned something very important there, that this is a part of the body that digests and breaks down our food to go where it needs to go. I thought that was an important spiritual point, that we take the knowledge that we gather in our head and we bring it down into our heart and our solar plex area. Now, here's the thing that I want to share with you that's kind of interesting. You that are into energy centers, you that understand the seven major energy centers, some in the East call it the word chakras, but they're energy centers. One of the things that I know, because I work and have for years with, with energy center, I've noticed that there are not as many energy centers that are separate from each other. I begin to detect that some of them had begun to overlap with each other. And one of the first ones that I found was between the throat, the heart, and the solar plex. And when you imagine these energy centers that are connecting with each other, they're creating new pathways. New energetic vibrational pathways and a way for information to come into where we live that we've never had before. In other words, there's not a better time that we can begin to receive the clarity of divine spiritual guidance in our life and the wisdom to build a life based upon the alignment of our soul purpose for why we are here. I want you to just contemplate that for just a moment. What it would be like if you were living the life that your soul cries out for. What we call our dreams and aspirations. All the things that you've said through life. Oh, if I could do this. If I had the opportunity to do that. If I could build this. If I could be an entrepreneur. And I could bring forth a business that would be a blessing to the world. And yet at the same time, something tells us, but you're limited. You don't have the finance. You don't have this. You don't have that. You can't do that. There's always that part of the brain that's called in the Bible the accuser of the brethren. Always accusing us that we are less than. But when wisdom comes through, wisdom begins to tell us how. Now, as the fact that knowledge is more masculine, let's look at it this way. The male can only carry the seed of knowledge, but he can't build it. He can't build it. He can take the seed of knowledge, but he has to give it to her. For she has the innate ability to take that seed and to build it and manifest it into a life. Now think of that on a spiritual and metaphysical. That all of the knowledge, all of the workshops, all of the things that we have learned and the books that we have read. I'm sure if you would put us in a certain situation, we'd sound like we were a pretty well informed group of people. In conversation. Oh yeah. Yeah I've read that. Yeah I know about that. Yeah I've done that. Yeah I teach that. (laughs) That doesn't mean. That it's become an application of our life. This is the place. In the heart and solar plex interface pattern. In which knowledge steps down. From being just the seed of knowledge. And intellect. To becoming wisdom in action. It's the how to of our life. Anytime the scripture speaks of house. It's speaking of consciousness. That's the house you build. And you either are building today. On the sifting sands. Of man made tradition and dogma. In other words, people, when things are going well, they can talk really pretty positive about it. But if something would hit your life, such as our brother Horace is going through, for instance, if something like that would hit you or your family, that's when faith has to be first. That's why he put Peter and faith first. 
before any of these other things that we talk about. Because at that point we have to see it through a different way. And faith allows us to see the things that even our physical eyes cannot see. We can see those things that are not to the eyes as though they were. Because they are. It's not imagination and fantasy to set and to use visualization and imagination. Often you're bringing in things that are truth that has never entered in to the personal consciousness level. But it takes wisdom to do that. It takes wisdom to build it into an aha moment. It takes wisdom to have an epiphany in which something gets to you and you're clear about it. Again, I'd ask you to imagine what it would be like to live the mindful life. To not live the life of guessing, trial and error, but living in an alignment with the higher purpose of yourself. Proverbs 16.16 16 says, How much better to get wisdom than gold? To get insight rather than silver. In the book of Colossians it says, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You ever get into a situation and somebody kind of catches you off with a question that you probably should have known, but you couldn't get it out. And then you go, oh, I knew how to do that. I, I should have said this, and I, I didn't do it. It's because you can't move from just having that knowledge to speak it out of your throat without wisdom. To break it down until it becomes the spoken word. Charles Fillmore speaks of wisdom in reference to Solomon. Interesting, Solomon, he calls soul a man, solarplex. The place in which we digest knowledge into wisdom. But you know this story that Solomon was one of the richest men of all the Bible. But he didn't ask for the riches. His goal was not to be rich. But yet he was the most wealthy person in the, in the Bible. But that's not how he got it by asking for it. But rather he asked for wisdom and chose wisdom above riches. And the God of Israel said to him, because this is in your heart, that you have not asked for riches, wealth, honor, or life of your enemies, nor have you asked for long life, but you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, none as others have ever seen. There is something to this seeking the kingdom of God first. I say this to myself every day and I say it to all the people that I speak to everywhere. We must rethink our priorities. We live in such a world that is so busy and so much opportunity. Not enough time to get through the day to do all the things that we just need to do. But if we will learn to allow ourselves a sacred time and space in which to contemplate and to meditate and to open that portal for new fresh energy to come in to our planet, which it needs badly. We don't have to keep recycling old third dimensional energy when there's all kinds of energy that we have yet to tap into. But somebody has to open the door. Somebody has to awaken the portals and the pathways to let that energy in. And when you make sacred space 
through same meditation, you're opening that portal for that energy to come in and through you and out into the collective consciousness of the planet. Don't do things for yourself. I meditate because I want to feel peaceful. I meditate because I'm not sleeping better and I want to, and I want to sleep better. I want to meditate because I want prosperity. We have to get out of that me, me, individual consciousness into let me be the availability of God in the earth to move in me and through me and out into the collective consciousness to affect a planet that is in serious, serious challenge. <laughs> Poised she is. To leap into another dimension of what it means to be the new earth. The new earth. A less dense earth. I told Tim the other day, I said, sometimes I feel that I'm moving. Like when you have those dreams and you're trying to get somewhere. You ever had those dreams and you can't get there? I feel that way all the time. I feel the density of this dimension that we've lived in so long that I feel like I'm this slowed down person trying to get to something I can't get to. But as we begin to bring in new fresh energy and new spirit and new possibilities and new vision and then we act upon it. That's the key. There's a treasure trove of information in this room right now. There is fantastic teachers and people that are trained and ready to teach. We have the knowledge. We need to bring it into the application of our life. Bring it into our energetic, etheric solar plex. And let it break it down into the everyday life. Wisdom is there for you in the big things. But it's there for you in the small things. Where you should move when you're ready to move. What house you should buy. Uh, when you're looking for a partner in your life. Or you're looking for a job. Or you've got a health issue. And you need to be guided to the right people that can empower you. Wisdom will bring you there. Wisdom is knowledge in action. And Nancy already, I think, mentioned that James says, but the wisdom that cometh from heaven, well, it's a different James. I mean, a different verse, but James said it, same James. But the wisdom that cometh from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Knowledge sometimes isn't. Knowledge is what people believe and thinks everybody else should believe. But wisdom is impartial. It is that neutral thing that runs through all of us. So quickly, in closing, integrate wisdom into consciousness that affects everyday life. Let me give you some points. Surround yourself with wisdom. Find those that give you wise counsel. Find people who are wise. <laughs> Read books that are not just facts and knowledge, but give you pearls of great wisdom. All of these are avenues to wisdom. Remember, birds of a feather flock together. Now, it's not that we don't need to go out in all directions into the world, but it's nice to come back and be with those of like mind. Can you say amen to that? Amen. That's what community is all about. And I see that happening here at Unity. I see people beginning to go out more and utilize their ministries and their teachings and doing more and then coming back and being refreshed and having always a base and a place in which to come back to be refueled again. Learn from your mistakes. The first time might be an accident. The second might be a mistake. But the third time, that's, and I don't like the word problem, a challenge. Remember, being wise not only means that you have established information based on facts and truth, but you're now ready to apply them to your life. If you've gotten a speeding ticket on a certain street, how wise is it to speed down that street again? <laughs> See, that's the difference in wisdom. Because a lot of times we do that. 
we know by knowledge that the speed limit is 30 miles an hour. We know that. We got the knowledge of that. But we don't do it. And we go 50 miles an hour and then we get caught. Because we didn't listen to wisdom that we learned from the knowledge. And change an action. Learn from other people's mistakes. Judgment prevents experience from being your uh, judgment prevents experience from being your teacher. You personally don't have to go through everything to learn a great lesson from it. I like that. I, I just don't make this a law that I've always got to go through some horrible thing to learn the lesson. If there was some hot wires up here and I know that it's going to shock me, I just best not do it. I don't need to get shocked to go, oh my God, I'll never do that again. <laughs> when I knew in the first place not to touch them. <laughs> What you learned yesterday is not enough was for yesterday. Keep yourself aware that every minute you will be open to new things and life wants to teach you about your environment, yourself and others. As you evolve, so do the messages that you must keep to keep in spiritual evolution. Somebody gave me the most interesting saying the other day. I'm going to try to remember, but it's so good. It says... Even though that we choose to worship an invisible God, we choose to destroy a natural Mother Earth, not realizing that the natural Mother Earth we're destroying is the invisible God we serve. I leave you with that bit of wisdom. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You want to say it again? Okay. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> We choose as human beings to serve an invisible God while destroying a natural Mother Earth. But not realizing the natural Earth we are destroying is the invisible God. I think that's amazing. That's some deep thought. But it's true. Wisdom is building this house. So let wisdom build this house. All right, let's take a moment to allow this attribute of this power and to take it into our life this morning. So if you join with me, get comfortable in your seat. Now let's invite the Holy Spirit. Whatever the Holy Spirit means to you, your higher self. But it is your guide, it is your teacher, it is that part of the divine who lives both in the human experience and the divine experience at the same time. It is the link between human and divine. It holds both wisdom and knowledge. It's not a he or she, it's really an it if you translate it, because it is both male and female. Holy Spirit, we invite you today you are welcome in this place to allow this power and this quality of power called wisdom to enter from this day forward more into our conscious life, into our everyday life, that we may recognize it in our times of contemplation, meditation, in our time of prayer that will acknowledge Sophia the beautiful feminine goddess of wisdom. Build a new house, this time on the solid rock of faith, Peter. And through Peter do we receive the strength of Andrew. And now bringing in the feminine of Sophia wisdom, we have three new attributes of the power that we can begin to build a new experience and a new life from this day forward. For a threefold cord cannot be broken, it says. Where two or three are gathered in my nature, I am there. This is a very important point in the 12 powers. There's this third point, the three. Wisdom wisdom 
you that need wisdom in your life right now, I ask that you invite wisdom into your life to guide you through a situation, a health situation, a financial situation, a family situation, whatever it is that you're going through that would make it so much better if you could get really clear to follow your path of entrainment and enlightenment. I invite you to take a deep breath and breathe wisdom into the consciousness of every cell of your body, every neuron of your brain, and open your heart to receive the seed of action of wisdom. We thank you, God, and we know that it is done according to your faith and according to your word. It has been accomplished, and so it is. Amen. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Is blessing me right now, right now, right now. Everybody, the Lord is blessing me right now. When? Right now. Oh yeah, the Lord is blessing me right now, right now. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me. This morning, started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, 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 right now. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So let's just stand, join hands, and sing the peace song in closing. a moment to hold world peace in our heart and going forth to bring that peace on earth through us closing with our prayer of protection <coughs> Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And 
again, I remind you not to be dismissed from this wonderful presence, but only from the assembling of ourselves together. God bless. Have a wonderful week.